If you like Necco wafers, the original candy wafer, yeah, that's a category that really took off, there's no need to watch this video. You're going to get screwed no matter what. A committee set up by Japan's ruling party is recommending that the company responsible for cleaning up the damaged Fukushima nuclear plant should be split up. Tokyo Electric Power Corporation, known as TEPCO, has faced massive criticism for repeated leaks of radioactive water at the plant. The committee wants a new company created to take charge of the decommissioning. Well, let's go to the BBC's Rupert Wingfield Hayes in Tokyo. Rupert, what is behind this restructuring when a company has so many liabilities which are costing it such a vast amount of money? Well, I think there are two things here, Nick. The first is that the last two and a half years or so since the disaster have not been great for TEPCO. Uh, there is a perception that it has bungled a lot of the, uh, the clean-up operation, that there has been incompetence, uh, that there have been repeated leaks of radioactive material, uh, particularly into the, into the uh, nearby ocean. And there is also, I think, a realization that this is a very, very long and complicated process that is going to go on for something like the next 30 or 40 years. And because of that, there is a need for focused, more specialised organisation to take over the job of decommissioning this plant uh, and meanwhile allow TEPCO, which is essentially an electrical power company, to get back to the important job of generating power to supply to Tokyo, which is it, it, its big customer. Is it really the case then that what we're looking at, uh, Rupert, is a decommissioning company which will be run and owned by the state? We don't know yet, Nick. These are recommendations that are going to be put to the government recommendations we understand is that it, 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 it is uh, a separation within TEPCO so it will still stay as one company but there will be a subdivision that will look after the decommissioning of the plant. The other recommendation is that the decommissioning process split away from TEPCO and is taken under the control of the government. I think a lot of the general public would be happier to see that but then that raises the question who's going to pay for all this because it's going to cost something around 100 billion US dollars over the next 30 or 40 years. Okay, Rupert, thanks for joining me. Uh, apologies for the breakup of sound at times. Japanese leaders have faced challenge after challenge in restoring communities near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Cabinet ministers say the government should be helping to pay to remove radioactive substances from the area, which will end up costing billions of dollars. Officials in the central and local governments are overseeing the decontamination of communities. The plant operator, Tokyo Electric Park Company, has been paying the bills. TEPCO executives want some help. The government is studying the matter comprehensively, including the financial issue. The government has long promoted nuclear energy as a national policy, so I think it's unfair to blame only TEPCO for the nuclear accident. Aso said the government shares some of the responsibility. Here's the finance minister, Taro Aso. Remember everybody's an Aso? Who can forget Taro Aso? <laughs> the biggest Aso in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an Aso that Aso is. <laughs> Well, he's in this headline, let elderly people, quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Aso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. Engineers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant spend hours every day trying to get a complex network of pipes, cylinders, and filters to work. The Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, is designed to remove most radioactive substances from contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi. The government is spending about $150 million to upgrade the system. Our latest installment of Nuclear Watch examines how ALPS would be used to tackle one of the biggest problems at the facility. Officials with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company say about 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the reactor buildings every day and gets contaminated. TEPCO workers have built nearly 1,000 tanks to store the tainted water, but they filled 90% of them. About 440,000 tons of wastewater is being stored in the tanks and in the basements of some buildings. Another 15,000 tons has accumulated in underground tunnels. Last March, TEPCO engineers started running ALPS on a trial basis. 
It can remove 62 radioactive substances from water. But it can filter out tritium. The system has three operational lines. It can treat 500 tons of water a day at full capacity. But ALPS has been dogged by a series of malfunctions that forced engineers to shut it down. In June, some pre-treated radioactive water leaked from the system's stainless steel tanks. Salt and chemicals had eroded the containers, leaving small holes. And in September, engineers halted a test run because of human error. A worker had left a rubber mat inside a tank following an inspection, and the mat clogged the drain. Still, TEPCO managers and government leaders are pinning their hopes on ALPS. NHK World's Ataku Kunieda outlines the challenges they face. Some of the problems with ALPS result from malfunctions. Others happen because of human error. About 3,000 people work at the plant every day. Two thirds are subcontractors. They don't have good enough communication with TEPCO staff. This poor communication results in mistakes. Managers need to fix it urgently. Right now, workers are testing the system, and they say they hope to put it into full operation next year. They originally planned to start full operation last month, so they are already behind the schedules. The government is helping TEPCO install a more sophisticated system to run in parallel. Once that complete, the systems together will be able to treat 1,500 tons of water every day. Tritium is similar to hydrogen in terms of its physical properties. It moves easily with water. So if we get tritium inside our bodies, we generally experiment with fluids. But there's no technology for taking tritium out of water. Still, the government allows higher releases of tritium than strontium, which also emits beta rays. Some experts say water containing tritium can be released without harming the environment as long as the substance is diluted. Water treated by ALPS will still be stored in tanks for the time being. No one has come up with a permanent solution. Radioactive substances removed by ALPS will also be stored on site. Managers have not decided where they will dispose of those substances either. Once ALPS is in full operation, the next big challenge will be dealing with the tritium it cannot remove. And managers will need to choose the final disposal sites for the treated water. Managers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have tried again and again to contain the spread of contaminated water, but they've been unable to stop the flow. They've come up with a new approach they hope will bring them success. They're going to pump up underground water around a storage tank. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked out of the tank in August. Workers dug wells so they could monitor the scale of the leak. On Monday, they checked a well 10 meters from the tank. They detected 220,000 becquerels per liter of radioactive substances in the water. Now they're going to dig five more wells, and they plan to start pumping up underground water over the next few weeks. They hope to collect and store about 10 tons per day. The workers are also busy removing highly radioactive soil from around the tank. They plan to start digging over a wider area. Disaster prevention specialists say a major earthquake that's expected to hit central and western Japan could be more devastating than predicted. A powerful quake in the Nankai trough out in the Pacific Ocean would unleash towering tsunami. The specialists say more than 130,000 people could die in the western prefecture of Osaka alone. 
that's much higher than previous estimates. NHK World's Masaki Otake reports. Officials with the central government estimated that 323,000 people may be killed across a wide area of Japan if a major earthquake occurs in the Nankai Trough. They said 9,800 of the victims will be in Osaka Prefecture. But a panel of experts in the prefecture raised that forecast to more than 133,000. They assumed tsunami would inundate a much larger area. The map on the left shows the central government's flood projection. The panel's projection is on the right. The experts believe the flooded area could be three times larger. They say a powerful quake would trigger liquefaction at river embankments and cause more flooding. The new projections are raising new concern among people living in Osaka. The figure gives me the creeps. It's just unthinkable. But the experts say a quick evacuation could be key to reducing casualties. The tsunami are projected to take 54 minutes to reach coastal areas of Osaka Prefecture. It would take them an hour and 50 minutes to reach the city of Osaka. The experts say if people start evacuating immediately after an earthquake, the number of deaths would be greatly reduced from more than 133,000 to fewer than 9,000. Kansai University professor Yoshiaki Kawata heads the panel. Most of the affected people would survive if they had relevant information and knowledge. The Osaka government plans to review its disaster preparations by the end of next March. It must first estimate damage to power, water and other infrastructure as well as the prefecture's economy. Masaki Otake, NHK World. Uh, Geiger counters can only reach certain airborne particles. Airborne is a key word for people. And we have 1,300 isotopes to worry about, and most can't be calibrated with the Geiger counter because it's classified. And sadly, Geiger counters only measure certain airborne short life, uh, like feet and inches, gamma rays. A second of hundreds of trillions a day that can last for centuries. And from 1,300 unknown weaponized isotopes, we can't see or smell or hear or taste or pick up even with the Geiger counters. So we can't smell it, hear it, taste it, or pick it up with the Geiger counters. Uh, Geiger counters are only for weak radiation, not the 1,300 military weaponized isotopes and the trillions of gamma and beta particles. Now,
We imagine that in the infinite universes parallel to this one, you are still staring dumbfounded at this video.